Hello friends, I want to welcome you to our Friday evening Bible question of the week. And we have a very important question today, dealing with once saved, always saved, question mark. Meaning, once you're saved, can you be lost? Is it true that once you're saved, that uh, there's nothing you could do where you'd be lost? And this is a question that has divided Christians for over a thousand years. Um, I want to state at the beginning, I know there are good, loving, spirit-filled people that are on both sides of this issue. But it is at the same time a very important issue to understand because misunderstanding this subject can cost a person their eternal life. Indeed, I believe there will be millions who will be lost because they did not understand the subject that salvation is something that you must nurture, that you must hang on to because you can lose it if you neglect your relationship with the Lord. Now, if you go to the doctor and he doesn't want to hurt your feelings, so he tells you, I think you've got poison ivy and you've really got skin cancer. He is not your friend. You need to know that there's a serious problem and then you need to address it. So all these folks who think, I came forward to the altar, I felt the Holy Spirit in my heart, I gave my life to Jesus, I know it was real, but then they drift away and they think, oh, well, I'm saved. I've talked to people before and they say, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm just not a practicing Christian. I was saved when I was a kid. That's a very dangerous belief because it's not true that you can turn your back on God and you'll still be assured of salvation. Let's find out what the Bible says on this subject. First of all, if you look, for instance, in Romans chapter 11, verse 22 and 23, Paul there says, Wherefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell severity, but towards you goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you'll be cut off. And uh, he's making uh, an illustration here about the people of God being grafted into the olive tree of Israel. Otherwise, you will be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Look at 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Paul is saying, I must discipline my body, I must press on, or I could be disqualified, I could be lost. That's all that you can get out of that. You look in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 and 2. Paul there says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which you also received, in which you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. There's some who held fast, but they got to hang on to that. Hebrews 4.1, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his, last, entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. He says, don't fall short of this promise. Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. You know, salvation is something that you must nurture. It's something where we need to hang on to the Lord. We need to abide in the Lord. You have several examples in the Bible of people who clearly were saved. Balaam the prophet was a prophet of God. He gave true prophecies. He was filled with the Spirit of God. But he began to covet money, and he ultimately was lost. Revelation warns about him, and uh, Peter talks about him as he is lost. You got King Saul, chosen by the Lord, filled with the Spirit of the Lord, just like David was filled with the Spirit of the Lord. He even prophesied. But then he nurtured a, a rebellious, proud spirit until finally he grieved away the Holy Spirit. God would not speak to him, not through prophet, not through priest, Urim or Thummim. And he went to a witch and he committed suicide. He was lost. Some might even contest. At one point, Judas was saved. Jesus sent him out along with the 12. They came back saying, even the demons are subject unto us. And they were performing miracles. But he clung to his greed and his selfishness and he also hung himself, took his own life. So it is possible for a person who was once saved to ultimately then be lost. Jesus said, he that endures to the end will be saved. We need to hang on to the end. That's what Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I've kept my faith. It's something that must be clung to, to the end. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. I'll read through verse 29. For if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation that will devour the adversaries. Anyone who rejected Moses' law died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose he will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot and counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? people who once walked with the Lord and turned away. That's why Paul says in Hebrews chapter 6, and this is a difficult verse, verse 4, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and become partakers of the Holy Spirit. Here's a person who's clearly saved. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away. It's talking here about people who have a saved experience and they fall away. 2 Peter chapter 2 talks about something similar, and this is verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord, they've escaped, they know the Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end of them is worse for them than the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. People who knew the way of righteousness, they experience the good things of God, and they turn away. And he says it's happened to them, according to the proverb, that the pig that was washed has gone to wallowing in the mire. Look at 2 Peter 3.17. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. It is possible for a person to fall from their steadfastness. That's why we've got to walk with the Lord and cling with the Lord. Can a saved person be lost? Clearly they can. Several examples in the Bible of this. Jesus says in John chapter 15, this famous passage about the vine, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me, these are branches in him, they're in Christ, that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. They've come to Christ, they've been saved, they're in Jesus, but then they don't have the fruits of the Spirit. They do not have fruits of evangelism. It says they are taken away. They are pruned off, gathered and burned. You can go to chapter 15 of John. Look at verse 6. If anyone does not abide, and that word abide there in Greek, it means continue, remain. They're in Christ, but they must remain. They must continue in Christ. If he doesn't remain in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they'll gather them, throw them in the fire, and they are burned. A few more verses here. Romans 11, verse 19. You will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said, because of unbelief they were broken off, and you stand by faith. Do not be haughty but fear, for if God did not spare the natural branches, the Jews, he may not spare you if you do not continue to abide in faith. Um, Therefore consider the goodness and the severity of God on those who fell, severity, but towards you, goodness, if, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you will be cut off. How can a person with a plain reading of the scripture like this get the idea that once you're saved, that you lose your freedom of choice and you can't be lost? John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they'll never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Someone will read that and they'll go, see that? We can't be snatched out of his hand. He will never let go of us, but we must also hang on to him. Notice how Paul puts it. Philippians 3.12, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Paul says Jesus does his part in laying hold of us, but I must lay hold of him. It's like, it's like we're in the water drowning and God has thrown us a rope. And the Lord says, I will never let go of my part of the rope of salvation, but you must hang on to your part. He doesn't take away our freedom to choose. If God forces us to be saved, that's not a love relationship. If we love him, we'll keep his commandments. People who say I'm saved because of a past decision, but I'm not obeying him. The Bible says they are liars and the truth is not in them. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. 
And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, speaking to Peter, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he might sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Now, why would Jesus pray for Peter that his faith should not fail unless there was some risk or potential that his faith could fail? And so the devil wanted to destroy Peter, just like he did Judas. But Jesus says, I'm praying for you. Peter, be on your guard. I'm praying for you, but your faith is at risk. And of course, Peter did turn around after he denied the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? A person can't say, well, I was saved back in 1962, and so I'm still saved. Paul is very clear. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators or idolaters or adulterers or homosexuals or sodomites or thieves or covetous or drunkards or revelers or extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. You've turned, you've repented of your sins. The Bible says we must repent of our sins and be renewed. Look in 1 Timothy 4.1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly, saying that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. They were in the faith, but they departed from the faith. They were saved, but they turned away, and now they're lost. Now, I don't think we need to live in constant fear. We are being saved. And I think that as long as we don't let go of him, if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, he continues the work of sanctification in our lives. 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's a process of perishing. But to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You know, and probably I'll close with this. Ezekiel 18, 24, here the prophet tells us, But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, will he live? All of the righteousness which he has done will not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed because of them he will die. Or that's basically saying he's lost. So if a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, God says, look, uh, everyone is going to be rewarded according to his works. If we are saved, our works will be different. Uh, Jesus said, you'll know them, not by their profession, but by their fruits. If they do not have the fruits of the Spirit, and if we're not walking with the Lord, you can't say, well, I was once saved in the past, so I'm still saved, even though I'm not practicing the Christian life. That is very dangerous belief, friends. If you'd like to know more about this subject, we have a book. We hope you'll share this uh, Bible question with your friends, a very important subject. The book is Can a Saved Man Be Lost? Written by Joe Cruz. This is a classic you'll enjoy. A lot of these scriptures and more are there. Order it, contact information just below.